Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good afternoon, this is Dr. Pradhan here. Welcome to NPTEL project on econometric modeling. So, today we will discuss the component called as a ANOVA. ANOVA means analysis of variance. Okay. So, before I start with this concept of ANOVA, we will like to highlight what, what is the objective behind ANOVA. So, in the last class we have discussed the reliability of the models. In fact, ANOVA is one of the component under reliability of the vibratory econometric modeling. So, first of all, what is the objective behind this uh, econometric modeling? When we will go for econometric modeling, the fundamental objective is to fit the data for a specific problems and over the process, we look for a structure in a data that means a good fit. So, there is you no know, hard and fast rules how to get the good fit or a good structure in the existing data setups. So, there are several procedures, there are several methods, there are several techniques. So, you have to apply to get a good fit. So, this is how you need lots of knowledge, lots of skill, then through which you have to design your models or we have to find a structure, good structure in a existing data setup. There are you can say lots of permutation combination you have to apply to get the best fitted ones or best structure in the existing setup. So, one of such component we can say ANOVA. All right. So, there are you know uh, the basic idea behind this you know good fit or you can say good structure in the data set is you start with a specific problems by using any particular techniques or any methods. Then there is a certain rules and regulations through which you can get a best fitted one. Okay. So, the basic foundation is you start with a specific problems. Okay. So, the moment you will get the estimated model, then your journey will start. So, now how to get all these details? So, now last class we have discussed the details about the you know estimation of esti uh, econometric models and the reliability part of the econometric model. So, today we will start with this particular specific component ANOVA. So, this term ANOVA stands for analysis of variance, okay? analysis of variance. The term ANOVA stands for analysis of variance. It provides information about the levels of variability when a, a, a you know regression model uh, and a basis for test the significance. So, you have to find out the reliability part of this particular model fit. So, the moment you have best fitted models, so we like to know how variability we can uh, have in this existing setup. So, this is what we you know uh, investigate through this component called as a ANOVA. ANOVA stands for analysis of variance. So, that means, so here uh, this particular ANOVA with respect to bivariate econometric modeling. Okay. So, now we have discussed for bivariate econometric modeling. So, we must have two variables y and x and through which we have fitted the model y had equal to alpha had plus beta had x. Okay. So, in the in the last lectures, we have discussed in you know, the last couple of lectures, we have discussed several structures or several ideas behind the reliability of the estimated models. So, now uh, means once you have the estimated model, your specific idea is a, a to test whether these parameters are statistically significant and in the same times, the fitness of the model must be statistically significant. So, that means we must have two specific objective, the uh, model significance with respect to parameters and another is the 
overall fitness of the model with respect to r square. So, that means, here we have two specific objective you like to know alpha head should be significant whether it is significant or not and and beta head should be significant or not. And second to get the value of r square which represents the uh, you know degree of model fit ok, the degree of model fit means with respect to best one ok. And the whether this r square will be statistically significant this is how we have to decide and through which we have to prepare a structure base structure within the existing setup. So, that means, what we uh, means what is our agenda? So, the with the uh, available information we have to fit a models then we have to look for the best one. So, there are many ways we can fit the uh, you know data with respect to existing problems even if there are two variables say you can say uh, you can say stock price and uh, you can say forex for an exchange. So, even if we will fitted the model, so whether stock price depends upon forex or for a forex depends upon stock price. So, still you know there are many ways you can start the modeling ok. So, uh, there may be with respect to uh, uh, data transformation with respect to techn uh, means technique transformation or with respect to assumption uh, 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 means relaxation. So, many things are there. So, that uh, you will get a best fitted son. So, you go any process. So, idea must be to get the best structure within the existing setup or to get the best one within the existing system. So, now, so the first part is called as a reliability of the reliability of the estimated parameters, reliability of the estimated parameters and second part is the overall fitness of the model, overall fitness of the fitness of the model. So, this overall fitness of the model test is otherwise known as called as a ANOVA. Okay. So, what is this ANOVA structures? So, now once you have this uh, you know uh, estimated models, so the, the moment you have estimated models, so y head equal to alpha head plus beta head <laughs> x, then modern, mo model information must have you know the structure we like to have is nothing but variance of alpha head, then variance of variance of beta heads. Okay. So, then standard error of standard error of alpha head, then standard error of beta head and you know t of alpha head and t of beta heads ok and probability level of significance and probability level probability level of significance this is for uh, beta ok. So, this particular setup is meant to know whether alpha head alpha head is a significant one or beta head is a significant one. So, within the existing information we like to know or another component called as a r square and adjusted r square ok r square represents the d a r square represents the percentage of variation explained by the regression that means what is the influence of the independent variable to dependent variable in percentage term so that is how we calculate like the ratio between explained sum square by total sum squares so explained sum square will uh, represent in terms of the influence of independent variable and total sum square is nothing but the influence of dependent variable. So, we like to know the uh, you know uh, degree of uh, influence through which uh, through the independence variable to dependent variables. So, that is how we have represent the r square and uh, adjusted r square. Adjusted r square is uh, just to you know incorporate with r square and that to degree of freedom. So, we will discuss detail what is the existing setup. So, what is all about this <laughs> you can say ANOVA all together. So, ANOVA specifically deals with it two things ok. So, let us start with this particular uh, you know uh, information table. So, what we look for? So, we look for R square statistics and we look for F statistics ok. So, that means, we like to know whether this overall fitness of the model is statistically significant. For this we need to have a prepare the ANOVA that is an analysis of variance tables ok. So, what is this ANOVA uh, analysis of variance tables? So, now we like to have sources of variations, sources of variations ok, this is sources of variations, then uh, uh, sum squares, sum squares, then mean sum squares, mean sum squares ok, mean sum squares, then degrees of freedom, then f statistics, 
and the probability level of significance. This is how you have to prepare the tables. Okay. So, the table information contains what is the sources of variations, sum squares, mean sum squares, degrees of freedom and uh, uh, f statistics and probability level of significance. You see the <coughs> idea behind the a uh, uh, idea behind this particular problem is so when we will look for you know uh, econometric models so we have two different structures so that means we have a y equal to or you can say a x component that is data plus you know error component okay this is what we will call it a error component so the existing setup the existing setup is you know with respect to means what is the influence of uh, x information on y and uh, what is not captured by x that we will represent in terms of you can say error term. So, we like to know what is the percentage impact on uh, x variables which is explained to us and which is the not uh, explained that is called as a unexplained which is represented by error component. So, obviously, so there are two sum squares. Okay. So, first sum is with respect to uh, explained sum squares, this is called as explained sum squares then there is a term called as a residual sum square, then there is a term called as a total sum square. Explain sum squares, so wh which is nothing but summation y hat squares. So, this is summation e squares and this is summation y squares. Okay. So, now, so, so far as a, uh, so far as a mean sum square is concerned, it is with respect to degrees of freedom. So, that means, here is y hat square divided by you can say k minus 1. So, it is k divided by k minus 1. So, this is nothing you know, but summation e square by n minus k and this is nothing you know, but summation y square by n minus 1 n minus 1. So, now the degrees of freedom accordingly this is k minus 1, this is n minus k and this is n minus 1. Okay, this is n minus 1. So, now we need to calculate f statistic with the help of above informations. So, now uh, uh, f statistic is nothing but the ratio between explained sum squares divided by residual sum square provided it is the you know <coughs> weightage factors of k minus 1 divided by r minus k means it is n minus k. Okay. So, this should be followed by r square statistic which is nothing but E s s by T s s. Okay. E s s by T s s. Let me exactly highlight what is this issue about this 3 this 3 is you know nothing but like this. So, now uh, our idea is here uh, uh, our idea is here summation y head squares. So, which is nothing but uh, summation i equal to 1 to n. Okay. Now, uh, y head minus y head bar all squares. Okay. So, this is how summation y head square because this is in small uh, 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 deviation format. Okay. So, now if we will simplify further, so this is nothing but summation i equal to 1 to n then y head minus y bar whole, y bar whole square because we know y head bar is equal to always y bar. So, this we have discussed uh, uh, long back. So, if we will simplify further then this is nothing but summation o, o alpha uh, alpha head minus uh, sorry bit plus beta head x minus y bar you can say whole square i equal to 1 to n. Similarly, summation e square summation e square that is unexplained sum or residual sum is equal to summation <coughs> you can say y head squares summation y head squares uh, uh, okay, summation y head square summation e square equal to uh, summation y square minus summation uh, uh, y head squares okay summation y head squares so this is the difference between these two so that means uh, what we will uh, wha, how will we write it means e is the devious e is nothing but uh, y minus y head because uh, uh, the overall structure is y equal to uh, y head plus e okay so this is how uh, error com error co component is uh, defined so that means it is nothing but y minus y head so, obviously, when we will go for deviation, then it is nothing but y minus uh, alpha head minus beta head x. Okay. So, to the power 
all squares i equal to 1 to n. Okay. So, third component is the summation y square which is nothing but summation y minus y bar whole squares. So, i equal to 1 to n. This is how the entire structure of this particular uh, you know uh, uh, analysis of variance. So, analysis of variance deals with the three specific components to check the reliability part of the model or to check the best fitted models. So, first component is explain some squares, then second component is residual sum square and third component is total sum square. So, we like to know what is the ratio between explain sum square to total sum squares and we like to know what is the ratio between explain sum square by residual sum square. So, the ratio between explain sum by total sum square is represented by R square component that is otherwise called as a coefficient of determination. Okay. This is otherwise known as coefficient of determination. That means, we look for two things. First is R square which is nothing but explain sum square by total sum squares and uh, uh, this is nothing but what is e, uh, what is ESS? ESS is nothing but summation y head square divided by summation y square. If we will simplify then the entire structure will be coming summation x y whole square by summation y square into summation x square. So, this is nothing but you can say this is nothing but uh, you can say r squares okay, correlation coefficient. Okay. So, then corresponding to r, r we like to know whether this particular component is statistically significant. So, that is how we have to prepare use f statistics. So, f statistic is nothing but the ratio between explained sum square by residual sum square. So, what we have to do? So, we will divide explained sum square by total sum squares and we will divide residual sum square by total sum squares. Okay. Of course, there is a degree of freedom here k minus 1 and here degree of freedom is n minus k. So, now what we will do here? So, this is this is one component provided there is a degree of freedom. So, k minus a and this uh, this degree of freedom is n minus k. Okay. So, k represents number of number of variables in the systems or number of parameters in the system and represents total number of observations. It is number of total number of observations in the systems. So, now this ES, ESS by TSS is nothing but R squares. Okay. So, it is nothing but R square by k minus 1. So, divided by RSS. RSS is nothing but uh, e, a, TSS minus you can say uh, uh, ESS okay. because uh, TSS is equal to ESS plus RSS. Okay. So, obviously, RSS equal to TSS minus ESS divided by TSSS and whole divided by n minus k. Okay. So, this is nothing but R square uh, upon k minus 1 divided by this particular term is equal to 1. Okay. So, this means 1 minus R squares because this is one component and this is another component. This is R square and this is equal to 1. Okay. So, now uh, <coughs> this is 1 minus r square. So, divide by uh, divide by n minus k. So, now this particular structure is called as a f calculated. Okay. f calculated. So, we like to go for you can say again f tabulated value with you know proper level of sig uh, significance means probability level of significance. Then like you know uh, reliability of the parameters. So, we like to judge the overall fitness of the models. Okay. So, now, uh, I will take the similar problems, then we, I will highlight how we will go for this you know overall fitness test, whether this particular uh, uh, means model is good fitted or you can say best fitted. So, we have to start with this particular you know reliability of this estimated parameters, then you have to integrate with the analysis of variance, because most of the components we have to derive from this particular parameter value only. So, okay. so, what is the technical procedure uh, uh, of all these issues? So, now we have two variables. So, y, y variables and x variables. So, now over, over the time frame, the moment we will uh, integrate y and x, so we will get the estimated model y head equal to alpha head and beta head x. So, then the moment you will get y head equal to alpha head, uh, uh, alpha head plus beta head x then we, uh, we can create another variable say y head which is uh, means sorry we will create another variable e which is the difference between y minus y head. So, that means 
here we start with y, u, y and x. So, we will get y head which is nothing but alpha head plus beta head x. Okay. So, then uh, this is first variable, this is second variable and we will get another variable y head and with the hel help of y and y head we will get the error component e. So, all together we start with the two variables then ultimately we end with the four variables. So, y x, y head and e. So, there are lots of games between y and x then y y head then again uh, you know y head e. So, we like to know how uh, we, whatever you know uh, variables you will use or how this way you will use ultimately the objective or the agenda is to get the best fitted model. So, that means, so whatever structure you have created, so that structure should be best structure for you. So, so far as a data fitting is a concern. Okay. So, we are just we have a problem actually. So, we have information that is what we represent in the form of data. So, the data has to be uh, you know properly applied to analyze that particular problem and the mom, the way you will fit the data to analyze that problem. So, that fit must be best fit. So, that is how we are doing all these jobs. So, now, so we <laughs> y x and you have got y head and e then ultimately. So, we will take the similar problem here the problem with respect to x and the problem with respect to y. So, uh, in the last class we have discussed so far as the reliability of the parameters that is alpha test and beta test. So, now yeah, we take this similar problems then we will integrate this particular uh, uh, the significance of the parameters to significance of the overall fitness of the models. The reason is that uh, uh, if one is you know uh, with in favor of you and another is not in favor of you then the model reliability is in the wrong side, wrong shape. So, that is why the a, a accuracy will be very high, model accuracy will be very high or reliability is very high when all the parameters are statistically significant at the higher levels and in the same times your overall fitness of the model also significant at the higher levels. If this is correct and this is not correct or this is correct or this is not correct, then it will go for go against the model fit. So, that is why we have to redesign, restructure, re, uh, you know reframe, so that the both the objectives can be go parallelly. So, that means, your parameters should be statistically significant and in the other side your overall fitness of the model should be statistically significant. So, now taking this particular problems, so here x contains uh, 9 observation and y contain 9 observations. So, that means, the first part of the uh, modeling is sample observations are uniform and you can proceed because with two variables and nine samples, it is pos possible to estimate. Uh, uh, in fact, if the model information will be very high, then the model fitness will be also very high accordingly. Uh, si uh, since uh, uh, in the it is in the class, so it is not possible to go with huge set of data because the moment you will take huge set of data then you need a statistical softwares. So, in the in the beginning we should not start with any statistical softwares. So, rather we start with a small problems we like to know actually or uh, our objective is here to know what is the structure and how do we get this reliability or how to test this reliability with respect to estimated parameters and with respect to the overall fitness of the model. So, that is why uh, you know artificially we have created a small data set with respect to two variables, so that we can uh, we can establish the concept very carefully. So, now the moment you have this much of information, then we have to proceed uh, step by step. So, what should be the first step and how do we go for our final objective? The final objective is to know the reliability uh, means significance of the parameters, estimated parameters that to alpha head and beta head and second objective is the overall fitness of the model that is the significance of R, R squares. So, for that we have to integrate with the F statistics. So, now the step 1 process, the step 1 process is here. So, we like to know the descriptive statistics. So, as usual we have calculated already descriptive statistics for x variables and y variables. So, uh, what is descriptive statistics? So, we are reporting a descriptive statistic is a, in fact, it is a uh, uh, it is a very complex and it is a multivariate in nature because description says include so many 
so many statistics like mean, median, mode, maximum, minimum, standard deviation, skewness, kurtosis, etc. So, in the meantime, we need not require to represent all these details simultaneously because when we will go for hardcore reliability part, uh, then that times you need to have all such information. In the meantime, we, we, we specifically highlight a few things because these few things are very relevant so far as a reliability check is concerned. So, now first, uh, first item we will consider is a maximum then second item is minimum, then mean, then standard deviations. Okay. So, now we like to know for x what is the maximum and for y what is the maximum. Similarly, for, um, uh, uh, for uh, x what is the minimum and for y what is the minimum. So, now if you make here the standard procedure is without any calculation. So, just you uh, arrange it ascending descending very quickly you can guess it. Otherwise, you just give a command. So, automatically there is here mathematical properties and statistical properties through which you can get this you know uh, 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 statistics the descriptive statistics that is with respect to maximum and minimum. So, for this x the maximum item is 81 and the for y the maximum item is 262. So, minimum item is for x is 32 and minimum item for y is 110. So, that means, the uh, for x the range is from uh, eight, uh, um, sorry 32 to 81 and for y the range is from 110 to 262. So, now you have x information and y information we like to know how these informations are uh, are perfectly uh, can be fitted. So, that is how our objective. So, now mean is here for x series it is 60.11 that is some x by n and here n represents uh, total number of observation that is equal to 9 here. So, this is mean for x and mean for y is nothing but 175.3. Okay. Corresponding mean we have a standard deviation here 16.53, then here standard deviation is 52.48. That means, for y series the standard deviation is 52.48 and for x series the standard deviation is 16.53. So, now with respect to with respect to all these information you can uh, take another uh, another two matrix that is you can say covariance matrix and you can say correlation matrix. It can give you little bit indication whether there is any association between these two variables. So, for the covariance matrix is concerned it is nothing but sigma 1 1, sigma 1 2, sigma 2 1, sigma 2 2. Similarly, here r 1 1, r 1 2, R21, R22. So, this particular structure is nothing but this is with respect to uh, uh, you can say one stands for here x and two stands for here y. Okay. So, so that means uh, we can call it here instead of 1 1 we can call it sigma xx, okay. we can call it sigma xy, similarly sigma yx then sigma yy. So, this is another way you can represent also. Similarly, this is rxy, this is uh, this, sorry this is rxx, this is rxy this is r y x and this is r y y. So, this particular structure is very symmetric in nature, uh, uh, this is very symmetric in nature and uh, in this particular case it is always equal to 1.0, this is uh, always equal to 1.0. So, we like to know what is the association between these two with respect to covariance with respect to correlation. So, I am not calculating all these details because uh, sigma x x is nothing but variance of x. So, which uh, uh, and if you will calculate uh, if you will square root then you will get the standard deviation this is how it is directly derived. So, similarly we will get the correlation coefficient it is nothing but covariance of x y by variance uh, uh, sigma x and sigma y standard deviation of x and standard deviation y. So, uh, with this uh, these are the basic information you need to incorporate before you go for the reliability test because these are all essential elements through which we can observe this issue. Okay. So, this is the first step of this particular reliability check or you can say uh, analysis of variance. So, in the step 2, in the step 2 what you have to do you report all these you know summary of this particular information. So, what is the summary of this particular information? So, the summary of inference because we have two variables. So, the summary of summation uh, is summation x first this is 541 then sum, summary uh, sum of y information is 1578. Okay, so, this is 1578 so, uh, sum and this is sum x is 541. So, okay. so, now we like to know what is summation x square. Summation x square is equal to here uh, 347, 34705, 34705 and summation y square is here is equal to 298, 
seven one two. So two nine eight seven one two. Similarly, and there is another component summation x y, which is nothing but eight eight two nine one eight eight. 8829 if you will go with the original samples not in deviation, then it will take lots of time. If it is a classroom problems, so obviously you need to uh, solve the problem quickly. So, as a result, it is better means the, uh, the test can be you know in less time if we will move from this you know original sample to deviation problem because it, it will give you quick results. Okay. So, that is how we have to transfer this entire concept into deviation format. What is the deviation format? So, we like to know what is summation x square, we like to know what is summation y square and we like to know summation x y. In fact, this is summation x square derivation we have discussed in the last class, summation y square we have also discussed in the last class and summation x y we also derive last class. So, directly we can specify here summation x square is nothing but summation x square minus n x bar square. So, if we simplify you will get 2186.09. Okay. So, that means summation x square is already here. So, you just calculate the x bar, then n into x bar square, uh, uh, if you will sub, uh, subtract from this summation x square, you will get summation uh, small x square. Similarly, summation y square is equal to here 22046.52. Okay. So, similarly, summation x y equal to minus 6560.52. 0.78. So, that means, since uh, covariance is coming negative, so obviously, so this particular, um, this particular, uh, 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 particular, you know, item represent that. So, they are negatively related to each other. So, uh, because variance is always positive for x and variance is also positive for y. So, the covariance can be positive, can be negative and that will be know the nature of the relationship. Since it is negative, so obviously, the representation is that they are negatively related to each other. Okay. So, this is the step 3 process of this particular analysis. Okay. This is the step 3 process of this particular analysis. Now, what we will do? So, we like to know or we like to go for this you know estimated parameters because through the estimated parameters we will observe certain things and that will be very helpful for this you know ANOVA analysis of variance. So, now what is this, uh, 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 this we, we have to move to step 4. So, what is this step 4? The step 4 idea is here. So, the step 4 idea is here to discuss uh, the reliability part of the models. Okay. So, what we have to do? So, the moment you will get all these information here. So, within the information we like to calculate first alpha head and beta heads. Okay. So, now uh, step 4 you fit the model here so, y head equal to alpha head plus beta head x. Okay alpha head equal to y bar minus beta head x bar and beta head equal to summation x y by summation x squares. Okay. So, now we have already summation, uh, summation x y here. So, summa, uh, summation x y here. So, this summation x y we can put it here. So, this is nothing but uh, minus 6560.78 divided by summation x square. Summation x square is here. So, 21, uh, 21 86.09 okay so now if we will simplify then we will get beta head equal to uh, uh, simply beta head equal to minus 3.001 okay so that we have also calculated uh, today morning so now uh, alpha head is equal to alpha head equal to y bar minus beta head x bar so which is nothing but y bar what is y bar here so, so y bar we have already calculated so that is uh, what is y, uh, y bar here so y bar is here uh, 6.11 60.1 sorry uh, 175.75.33 uh, minus beta head beta head is uh, minus 3 into 0, 0, 001 into this x bar x bar is here 60.11 so this particular item it's a 60.60.11 uh, okay so this is how the alpha head is derived 
So, now with the help of alpha heads, uh, what will you get it? So, if you simplify, then the alpha head component will be coming 355.72, 355.72. So, this is alpha head value and this is beta head value. Okay. So, now the estimated model will be y head equal to 355.72 minus minus 3.001 x. Okay. So, this is alpha head and this is beta heads. This is alpha head and this is beta heads. Okay. So, this is alpha head, this is alpha head and this is beta head. So, that means this, this particular item represents alpha head and this particular item represents beta head and slope is coming negative. So, by default it is negative related to each others. Okay. So, now after getting all these things, so next item is to check whether this particular parameter is statistically significant means this particular value is significant and this particular variable significant and for that you need to you need to calculate the variance of alpha head and you need to calculate variance of beta head and followed by standard error of alpha head, standard error of beta head, T of alpha head and T of beta head. The moment you will get T of alpha head and T of beta head, then you have to compare with the tabulated value. Then you can get to know whether it is statistically significant and if it is statistically significant at what level. That what we have already discussed in the last class. Just uh, uh, I am just integrating once again, so that uh, the uh, foundation or you can say uh, integration can be perfectly uh, you know okay. So, all right. So, now we, we have to move to step 5, we have to move to step 5. Step 5 idea is to check uh, find out the variance of alpha head, variance of alpha head is nothing but sigma square sigma square u summation x square divided by n summation x square. Okay. So, this is capital X, this is deviation x, okay, small x. All right. So, now variance of beta head, variance of beta head is equal to sigma square u by summation small x square. Okay. So, now we know summation x square, we know small uh, summation small x square, we know the value of n, but we have no idea about sigma square u. So, what is sigma square u? Sigma square equal to error variance, which is nothing but summation e square by a n minus 2. This is nothing but n minus 2. Actually, it is n minus k, but since it is a bivariate model, so uh, k represents 2. k represents number of variables in the system or number of parameters in this particular econometric system. So, since it is a bivariate setup, so k equal to 2. So, obviously, the error variance equal to sum, uh, summation e square by n minus 2. So, now what is summation e square? Now, for that, so summation e square equal to summation, summation y square minus summation y head square, okay, summation y head square, summation y head square. So, uh, uh, which we have already derived how it is coming. So, what is our, our agenda here? So, we like to know first what is summation y square and what is summation y head square. So, by calculation we have summation y square is equal to 22046.52 which we have already calculated. Okay. Then summation y head square is nothing but uh, uh, beta head square summation x square. So, which is nothing but uh, summation y head square is nothing but uh, 196 uh, uh, 196 uh, 89.84 okay so this is somewhat you can say summation x this particular uh, item is nothing but summation xy whole square by summation x square so uh, we have already uh, derived all these things so this just we are reporting this value summation y square here summation y head square here so we like to know what is summation e square okay summation e square is nothing but summation y square minus summation y head square so now if we subtract then the final outcome will be a 2356.68 okay so this is summation e square and that is how we have to we have to integrate here in this particular structure because we ultimately like to know what is the error variance okay so ultimately now what is error variance so error variance equal to sigma square u summation e square by n minus 2 so summation e square is coming like this so this is nothing but 2356.68 divided by n minus 2 n minus 2 is nothing but 7 because n is 9 and k is k is obviously 2 so n minus 2 represent 7 so if we will simplify then it will be coming 336.67 so this is how it is the error variance. So, now with the help of error, error variance, 
you can able to get or you can get uh, or you can able to get this alpha variance of alpha head and variance of beta head. So, now oh, yeah, now what is the error, uh, variance of alpha head here? So, now variance of alpha head is equal to 33 a 33 a 6.37 uh, sorry 33 6.67 so this is what we have uh, uh, derived right now so that is summation is e uh, uh, sigma square summation is e square by n minus 2 multiplied by uh, summation x square by capital x square by uh, uh, n summation small x square so summation capital x square value is 343705 divided by 9 into Oh, 2186.09 okay so if you will simplify this particular structure ultimately you will get the item called uh, the number called as a 593.86 so this is variance of alpha head okay so similarly we will get variance of beta head so variance of beta head is nothing but sigma square u by summation x square so this is nothing but summation e square is 3336.67 divided by summation x square which you have already derived 2186.09 so this is nothing but 0 0.154 so this is variance of beta head so but actually we need standard error of alpha head and you need standard error of beta head so what you have to do we have to get standard error of uh, we need to have standard error of alpha head and we need to have standard error of beta head. standard error of alpha head is nothing but variance of variance of alpha head Okay, variance of alpha head and variance of beta heads. So, standard error of, uh, standard error of uh, alpha head is variance of alpha head which is nothing but uh, uh, coming 24.37. So, because uh, that means this particular 5 this is nothing but 593.86 square root. Okay, so, this, is, this will be coming 24.37. So, standard error of beta head is equal to Oh, variance of beta head so 0 0.154 to the power 1.1 1 by 2 so which is coming 0 0.392 okay so now we have received variance of uh, uh, standard of alpha head and standard of beta uh, beta head so now we have to go for hypothesis testing because we like to know uh, like to know whether this particular item is statistically significant and for that we need to set a hypothesis okay so, what is this hypothesis? You, know, for, uh, you, you have to set hypothesis for alpha and we have to set the hypothesis for beta. Okay? So, that means we like to know whether statistical uh, the uh, alpha parameter estimator alpha parameter is statistical significant or not or beta parameter is statistical significant or not. So, that means uh, the, uh, the item will be significant if it has some value. So, obviously, we, uh, we start with that this, uh, this item has no value, then we reject this statement. So, because the last class I have discussed. So, the moment you go for hypothesis testing, then you start with the, the integration of two hypotheses called as a null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. Null hypothesis means the assumption uh, you have to assume that the true statement is wrong. So, then you have to reject this wrong statement and we will be coming to the true fact. Okay? So, for that we have to assume that uh, here for alpha head we have to assume hypothesis such that null hypothesis alpha head equal to 0 against alternative hypothesis alpha head not equal to 0. And similarly, for beta head H0, you have to assume that beta head equal to 0 and alternative hypothesis beta head not equal to 0. So, now uh, uh, the moment uh, to test all these hypotheses, then we need to have, we need to move to, uh, we need to move to step, uh, uh, step uh, 8, okay, st no, sorry, step 6, okay. So, we need to move to step 6, okay. So, what is step 6? Since uh, since alpha head equal to zero, so obviously t of alpha head equal to <coughs> alpha head by standard error of alpha head, okay, and t of bit, uh, which is nothing but uh, uh, how much years? So now 355.72 divided by 24.37. So this is what we call as a t of alpha head. So t of alpha head uh, we will get it 14.6, 14.6. So that means T of alpha head, this is equal to 14.6, and this this is calculated T. This is calculated T statistic. Okay. Similarly, T of beta head is equal to beta head by standard error of beta head. Standard error of beta head. So, which is nothing but uh, minus 3.001 divided by 0 0.392, and if you will simplify, you will get simply minus 7.65. Okay. So now. 
so t of beta head is equal to minus 7.65 okay so now you have to go for statistical uh, test okay so for that you have to draw the normal distribution curve okay so now this is accepted regions and this is rejection regions this is also rejection region this is left tail test and this is right tail test and this is together we call it two tail test okay so now let us assume that for a particular instance uh, we, we actually th this particular you know uh, interval so we will uh, get through tabulated statistics okay so let us assume that at a particular level of sample size and particular degrees of freedom we uh, we 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 let us assume that this deadline you can say 2.12 and this side is minus 2.12 okay so let us assume that the t of alpha had uh, the uh, uh, you know target line is 2.12 and this is minus 2.12 so then we have to compare what is the <coughs> our status of our t alpha head and status of t beta head so we like to know what is this whether this particular item is significant and this particular item significant this is our you know objective so now we have to place the tabulated statistics uh, with respect to uh, 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 no sorry we we have to place the calculated statistic with respect to tabulated statistics then then we have to justify whether we uh, means we have to conclude that uh, or we we have to justify that whether the null hypothesis is rejected or not so now what is the criteria here so we start with the t alpha head so t alpha head is 14.6 so that means it is coming right tail okay so this is how it is called as a 0, 0.0 this is origin so 2.12 means it is greater than to this uh, you know uh, uh, interval so that this 2.12 means so 14.6 will be coming this side okay this side will be coming 14.6 that means it is in a rejection side so that means once it is in a rejection side so we are rejecting null, hypo uh, null hypothesis so that means our statement is that alpha head alpha head not equal to 0 so that means alpha is statistically significant so now we, if it is statistically significant then we have to check it at what level it is statistically significant is it 1 percent it is 5 percent or 10 percent then you have to look into uh, this uh, items 2.12 so this 2.12 is derived with respect to 1 percent level or 5 percent level or 10 percent level then accordingly you have to give justification similarly come to that means we are concluding that uh, t alpha head is statistically significant and of course it will be highly significant that means it is significant at 1 percent level because 14.6 is absolutely very high all right so now minus 7.65 minus 7.65 means this will coming this side so left left side that means minus 7.65 is coming this side okay so this is again rejected region so that means we like to uh, we have to reject here the null hypothesis the moment we reject the null hypothesis then obviously we will conclude that this particular item cannot be zero it will be statistically significant then again <coughs> regarding probability level we have to look what is the what is the <coughs> value at what level so accordingly we will conclude that this particular item is statistically significant for the time being so that means alpha parameters and beta parameters are statistically uh, statistically significant okay so now we have to look for this you know uh, we have to look for its you know analysis of variance so now what we have to do so we have to go for analysis of variance so now the second part of the problem since alpha parameter and beta parameters are statistically significant so now we have to integrate with the overall fitness of the model so overall fitness of the models looks for three three items so summation y head squares and summation uh, summation y square and summation uh, summation e square summation e square so what is summation y head square so summation y head square so let me highlight here what is summation y head square uh, yes summation y head square is here uh, summation y head square uh, is equal to this is 19689.84 and this is summation y square is equal to uh, this is equal to 22046.52 and this summation e square is equal to uh, summation e square is equal to 23 56.68 okay so now so that means uh, 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 I, I'll, I'll write it again uh, once again let's better to very brief uh, ANOVA so summation 
y hat square equal to 19689.84 ok. So, then uh, this is summation y square which is equal to 22046.52 and summation e square equal to this minus this which is equal to 2356.68 ok. So, this is how we have received this items ok, we have received this items. So, now uh, we look for uh, we look for the ANOVA tables. So, what is this ANOVA table? So, we need explained sum squares. So, uh, mean of expl explained sum square, then residual sum square, then uh, total sum square. Okay. So, this is uh, this is sum squares. Okay. Then uh, mean sum squares. Okay. Mean sum squares. Then <coughs> mean sum square then we have to obviously there will be degrees of freedom. So, explain sum square obviously uh, explain sum square equal to summation uh, y hat square this is summation e square and this is summation uh, y square. So, okay. mean square is uh, obviously it is nothing but so that means y hat square is this much. So, 19689.84 divide by a k minus 1, it is k minus 1. So, k minus 1 means 2 minus 1, it is 1. Okay. So, uh, this much of value we have to calculate. Okay. So, then similarly, uh, summation e square, summation e square, uh, summation e square is nothing but uh, uh, what is this summation e square 2356.68 divided by residual sum square n minus k, n minus k means it is k equal to 2 here, n equal to 9, so it will be 7. Okay, summation e square. So, summation e square means uh, this is 22046.52 divided by n minus 1. So, n minus 1 means it is 8. So, we have to find out its statistics. So, how much it will be coming? So, that means the picture will be like this. So, one second. So, I will just uh, uh, highlighting the detail exactly item. So, so this will be coming, uh, this will be coming. Uh, explain some square. So, this will be coming 19722.04 and this will be coming residual sum square 330.565. Okay. So, now uh, we know R square statistics. So, R square will be a, a you know summation TSS. So, this TSS will be coming how much TSS will be coming. So, this is a summation y square summation y square by n minus k. So, this will be uh, this will be exactly equal to uh, uh, 2 equal to 22046.52 divided by 8. Okay. So, it will be coming 275 this is 2755.8. Okay. So, now your R square equal to ESS by ESS by TSS. Okay. So, if we will simplify this one, so this is ESS is 19722.04 divided by 2755.8. So, it will be coming, it will be coming what is R square value here. So, the R square value is here, uh, this will be coming uh, 0 0.89, a 0.895. So, this will be coming 895. Okay. So, now we have to calculate F statistics, F is the ratio between ESS by RSS followed by degrees of freedom k minus 1 and n minus k. Okay. So, this ESS is here 197222 and uh, 0 0.04 and divided by degrees of freedom 1. So, corresponding by RSS, RSS is 330.565 divided by 7. Okay. So, that means we can directly just make the ratio between this and this, we will get this result. So, 19722.04 divided by 330.565. Okay. So, if we will simplify this one, then F will be give you 59.56, 59.56. Okay. 59.56. So, now, so the moment we will get F, okay. so then you will again go for the you know statistical significance of this particular test. Okay. So, now we have to assume that this you know this particular item is e equal to 0. So, again you have to fit the null hypothesis and you have to fit the alternative hypothesis. Then we have calculated statistics. So, that means F cal calculated is equal to 59.56.
So, obviously, this, this is 0 labels 0, 0.0. So, this side let us assume that the, uh, the calculated value, uh, tabulated value is say 2.96 and this side minus 2.96. So, obviously, we have to check uh, with respect to degrees of freedom and you know sample size, we have to uh, uh, we have to get the tabulated picture of the left side and right side, then you can get to know where is the position. So, obviously, uh, in fact, uh, for F statistic, it will obviously will be coming in the right side, there is no question of you know left tail test uh, in this particular instance, because everything in square, so it will be always in positive. So, that means, this particular structure will be like this. So, we just like to know what is F calculated and what is F tabulated, okay? F tabulated. So, now let us assume that if F tabulated is 2.96, uh, obviously we will calculate with respect to degrees of freedom. So, since it is greater than to greater than to tabulated statistic, then we can conclude that it is statistically significant. We will calculate that it is statistically significant. So, that means in the F F in the case of F statistic, so the component will be always positive and the positive value whatever you will get it, then you have to calculate the uh, corresponding you can say uh, corresponding tabulated value, then you have to compare this calculated value to tabulated value. If it is greater than to that tabulated value, then you have to justify that it is statistically significant and if it is statistically significant, then you have to look at what levels, is it 1 percent, is it 5 percent, is it 10 percent. Then according to, we, uh, accordingly we have to conclude that the model is the most reliable one, because our parameters are highly statistically significant and also overall fitness of the model, which is represented by R square and is tested by F statistic is also statistically highly significant. So, that means, the model can be considered as the best model. So, that means, our the data structure is the best fitted one. So, this is how we have to go for the analysis of variance or the second part of the reliability. With this, we will conclude this particular component called as a reliability of the modeling with respect to estimated parameters and analysis of variance. Okay? That means, overall fitness of the models. So, uh, uh, for this, we have to conclude this session. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.